to the computer. And I, I, you know, I want to apologize one more time to everybody who's here for my mistake in daylight savings time that I gave the wrong universal time. <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> okay, Carrie, we're recording. Okay, thanks, Alan. And glad to see everybody here on the small screen. Um, this is going to be part two of the February 26th PZS. So it's a little different from what I had originally envisioned when I thought about this two-part process, but that's okay. So you're going to get to see a few more examples of virtual presentations from people who didn't have a chance to present in February. And then we'll circle back around at some future date to um, having people show off what they've learned via OBS workshops and other experimentations. So before we kick off and really get going, I want to remind you of basic Zoom etiquette, which is to mute yourself when you're not speaking so we don't hear your background noise. Um, if you haven't already done so, please sign in via the chat. Just tell us your name, where you're from. And um, I can't think of anything that I missed. I don't usually do this part. So Alan, let me know if I missed something. We're good? Okay. Then I will let you know that our, our intrepid presenters today, we're going to kick it off first with Katie Sullivan and special guest from the Museum of Science in Boston. Then we're going to transition over to Guillerme from Brazil, and we'll end with my coworker Kyle from Digitalis. So without further ado, I shall mute myself and kick it over to Katie. Thanks, Carrie. Hi, everybody. My name is Katie. Uh, my pronouns are she and her. In case you don't know me, I'm from the uh, Charles Hayden Planetarium over in Boston at the Museum of Science. Um, and I do have a special guest with me today. So I promise the person that's named Katie's special guest is not a Zoom bomber <laughs> or anything like that. But um, they'll join in just a moment. Um, so for my portion, I just wanted to, I kind of wanted to just demo um, how to use a virtual audio cable. So it's not really a piece of a presentation that we do, but it's a really useful tool, um, especially if you're just doing shows from like one computer at home and you don't have a super fancy setup. Um, so we've started doing school programs uh, like virtual field trips starting in the late fall and we're still doing them and some of them are from home some of them are from the museum of science in a in an actual studio um, but the ones that are done from home are all of the planetarium programs and we don't have all the crazy fancy equipment that's available in the studio so this was a problem that we ran into fairly quickly was how do we use obs um, if we're sharing like a video or just any any separate media source that has audio um, because up until then we've been showing so various software like Stellarium, Worldwide Telescope, at NASA Eyes, things like that um, and just using our own microphones in Zoom but then if we want to show a video we can't share that audio um, without like you know a fancy mixer or anything like that so similar to the virtual camera that is used in OBS there is a virtual audio cable um, that you can download for free so uh, the website and I'll switch on over uh, is called virtual to do, do, do let's see is it showing up on my let's see oh I'm in studio mode okay there we go. There we go. Um, so this is the website. It's vb-audio.com slash cable. Um, this is just a really kind of basic virtual audio cable. But once you download it and install it, um, it should appear as one of your audio sources that you can um, you can choose from. Like if you were to change your microphone in Zoom, when you pop that window open, this virtual cable will be one of your options. Um, so once you get that downloaded and installed, there's a few things in OBS that you have to change. Um, so for that, I'm going to just do a normal screen share so you can see my setup in OBS. Um, so once you've got that installed, you can go over to file settings and change your monitoring device. So you'll go down to audio 
And this is where you would set your um, virtual audio cable. So usually uh, the default is usually your computer speakers or whatever, your headphones, whatever you're normally using to listen, um, but you're going to change it to this virtual cable. So once you've got that um, all set up, now you would take all of your audio sources, including your microphone or audio from any um, videos, and you're going to manage all of that in OBS. So in my camera scene right now, you'll notice that I've included an audio input source here. I called it my microphone. You're gonna to wanna to add your normal microphone that you use um, to every scene in your OBS scene collection. And so that would just be, you know, going to add and then audio input capture, choose your microphone, the one that you're used to using as the device. Um, and then that will enter into your sources. So that part's fairly straightforward. Um, the next thing that you want to do is go into the properties of your microphone. So in this case, you can just hit the, the gear right next to um, the audio source in the audio mixer and go to advanced audio properties. And you'll wanna set your microphone to monitor and output. And so this will make sure that everybody on the receiving end of things when you're using the virtual cable is able to actually hear it. So if I were to change this to monitor off, um, you won't be able to hear me. So I can just hopefully nobody heard me there. Can anyone confirm? <laughs> Did that work? OK, good. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's all you have to change. And then if you have a video in here, you would change that as well. Um, so if I go down to um, this scene, it's called video. This is our pre-show that we play before we have our school shows, um, just to like kind of wait for everybody to get into the, the um, webinar. So I don't have my microphone in this scene, which is fine. So you won't be able to hear me, but you should hopefully hear the video, the um, audio from the video. All right. Did everybody hear that? Okay, great. Awesome. Um, so yeah, it's really just a uh, that's simple. Um, if you want any like written up steps or anything like that for using the audio cable, I'd be happy to send that over. Um, the particular, the website that has this specific audio cable also has a bunch of other ones because this is the most simple version. And if you want to get real fancy with things, it might be better to have a more um, complex audio cable. So there's other options here. I know voice meter is a really popular one. Um, some of them have weird names like banana and potato, but they're all, they've got more capabilities than just the basic one, but the basic one has been working really well for us. Um, all right. So that is the part of this that I wanted to talk about the audio cable. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen. Uh, and then there's one other feature that I wanted to show you called OBS Ninja. So if you ever wanted to include an additional person in your stream, but they are not in the same room with you, um, you can use OBS Ninja. So the website for that uh, looks like this. You would just go to, uh, let's see here. I got so many windows open, um, obs.ninja and this is from the perspective of the person that's not using OBS. So since I'm hosting OBS, I won't have to do anything on this side of things, but my special guest today had to go to obs.ninja and then um, add camera. So once you add your camera or you click on add your camera, you can set your video source and your audio source and just hit start. Um, I'm not going to hit that right now because my camera is already being used by OBS, so it's not going to work. Um, but my guest has done that today. And then you can go back into OBS. 
and enter that URL. So the person using OBS Ninja is going to send you their specific URL that comes up when they add their camera. And then you can add them as a browser source. So here I have my guest um, that has been added as <laughs> a browser source. And I gave it away too early, but my guest is Talia. You can talk, Talia, I think. They should okay. be able to hear you. There you go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I thought that would be fun to just demo how to add an additional person. Um, the audio can get a little bit tricky. So as you might have, might have noticed, Talia right now is using um, her Zoom audio and the visuals through my OBS stream just because using that virtual cable that I have, um, you can control her audio, but I just wouldn't be able to hear her. So you'd be able to hear her on your end of things, but I wouldn't. So it'd get a little tricky if you were doing like a, a show with two people and you're trying to communicate. Um, so for that, you'd need one of the kind of more advanced audio cables, but uh, that is what we've got for now. And that's been the simplest, um, best fix that we have for our issues uh, in MOS at school. And it's been really helpful for our other public live programs as well. So I'll stop there. And does anybody have any questions about I'll either of these? Uh, let's see. The Make sure to here. unmute if you have questions. Yeah. When you played the video, could you hear the video? Not me, because okay. it's the same problem that like I can't, I wouldn't be able to hear Talia either. Um, so I know that the video is playing and I usually get confirmation from someone else that they can hear it. Um, but that's, yeah, another reason why you'd want one of the more sophisticated virtual cables. Thanks. Mary's hand up. Hey, thanks for that presentation. I have a question about OBS that I have been asking many people and nobody seems to be able to give me an answer. So can anyone speak to what is the purpose of doing it this way rather than sharing your screen in OBS? So the first person who um, showed me how to use it showed me that you could do a preview of your screen, a full screen preview and then you can share that. You know, you do a full screen preview of the, the, the little screen that shows all your, all your stuff, and then you share that. Um, is it just that, is this just how you would do it if you don't have a second monitor? Is that it? So instead of um, using the studio mode? Instead of using virtual cam and virtual cables and all of this to mm -hmm. go to go in as a video source. I, I, no one seems to know, like, no one seems to be able to answer that question for me, but I figure there must be a reason why everyone does it this way rather than sharing their screen. So just using OBS in general, as no, opposed to sharing- By using virtual, virtual cam and virtual cables to go yeah. video source to Zoom versus doing a screen share in Zoom. So I have a very specific reason for us, um, and it has to do with the frame rate. So uh, when we're sharing, like if we're sharing Worldwide Telescope or sharing our screen using open space, the frame rate's really choppy and it doesn't give you that kind of free motion that OBS seems to, to help with. Um, the even optimized zoom frame rate is still kind of choppy. So we switched to OBS because it kind of solves that problem for us. Um, you do have to have like a fairly hefty computer to run it or at least enough RAM to kind of get it all to um, work smoothly. But that's why we switched to using the virtual cam where we can have all of our scenes and transition through them and you know, the audio is just kind of a separate problem that came with using OBS, but it was all visual quality for us specifically. I don't know if that's different for anyone else. Thank you. That's a really helpful answer, actually. Any other questions? 
I'm scanning for hands, but I have a very small screen, so it takes a while. <laughs> no? Yep. Not at this time? Okay, we'll have a few minutes at the end for general questions if you think of anything. But thank you to Katie and special guest Talia. Well done. I love Thanks the everyone. name OBS Ninja too. I know it probably wasn't your idea, but it's a great name. <laughs> it is fun. <laughs> <laughs> and that means it's time to kick it over to Guillerme. Hello. Uh, I'm not talking about OBS. Uh, I'm just going to uh, talk about what we are doing on our virtual shows here. Um, we are mostly working with uh, school groups, a uh, few things on open to everybody on Facebook or YouTube, mostly to school groups in, in Zoom. So it's make a lot different. Uh, we started uh, our shows always with a, a small video, two and a half minutes, uh, explaining how to use Zoom. Because most people here, most of the students are more used to Google Meet. So we have some specific instructions and that's very good to, to help the kids. We choose uh, Zoom because of its uh, uh, characteristics, but especially because of the polls. So we really use the polls. That's uh, amazing how the kids interact when they have a uh, few questions uh, that make them ask to. We have some icebreaker, uh, icebreaker uh, questions like, have you ever been to the planetarium before? Uh, would you like to be the first, first human to land on Mars? So just to make them uh, learn how to, to answer, answer the questions and to make them talk. We have something like, did you like the show? And we cross fingers to say to them to say yes. Uh, but we have some interesting questions to learn about their uh, knowledge about astronomy. Like, is the sun the biggest star in the universe? Usually yeah. they say yes. How many stars do, you, do we see during the night? How many stars do we have in the galaxy, in the universe? And the most interesting, interesting thing in Zoom is that we can record everything, all the answers in a spreadsheet. So we can have all the data to, to look after the, the show. The Zoom has a, a really nice thing that we can let them draw in the screen. So we put the screen with the, the stars and then, okay, just draw your constellation. It never works. Never, 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 never. But it's a lot of fun and they, they feel comfortable to, to start to, to work with us, to talk to us and everything. So it's, it's really nice, even if it doesn't work, never. If we don't have the Zoom to use the pose, we have used Kahoot. It's a tool to, to questions and answers. That's really nice. We used that uh, last year in a competition here with the schools. And it's really nice to, to additional tool if you don't have the, the poll tool of the Zoom. And, what, and I'm just show a, a little bit about the Kahoot and what we are doing this year different from last year. Uh, every session, every show also starts uh, showing them uh, where we are and where they are. We are doing shows to all over the country. So uh, the first show I, I did this year was about 3000 kilometers away from me. So we have a lot of things, uh, a lot of fun to have during the show, talk about the difference on the sky. So, the first thing we show is, is to make it more personal. It's their show, especially designed to them. And we also have developed a, a model of our planetarium in, using Blender. So we can show the planetarium. Most of people that we have uh, 
had virtual shows, they have never been to a planetarium before, more than 50%. So we show the planetarium and we fly through the planetarium and we get in the planetarium and show them why are we going to show uh, things uh, round instead of a flat uh, a screen, we show a, a circle in the sky. The Kahoot, we can have it on computer and an app to, to the phone. And the phone will appear like that, the four options. And just one question that we did last year, uh, showing the, the night sky. Uh, tonight at 11 p.m., there's a planet visible through the naked eye, which is that. Here's the planet we are talking about. It's December the 2nd last year. So we can have Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, or Mars. And then we give them some time to, to choose their answer. And oh, come on, that's Mars. Kahoot, for those that doesn't know Kahoot, it has some score based on the, the time you get to, to answer the question. So it's a, a thousand points if you answer right away, or it's a 500 if you answer the half time or even nothing if they don't answer. About this year, uh, we started to, to make it more uh, storytelling and interactive sessions. So now we have like Mila Goes to Mars that I started presented this year. We started telling the story of a young girl that was fascinated about everything from dinosaurs to the space. She's about 10 years old, uh, sometimes 12, something like that, depending on the kids. Uh, that's the majority of the public we have. So we make them feel that they are Mila going to Mars. And the show is, they decide where to go. So we started talking about Mars, about Mars missions, and they have to design a mission. So we will say uh, that we can have orbiters, landers, or rovers, and they will decide what mission are we going to, to follow. The first that uh, uh, I had decided for a lander. I don't know why they decided to, to go for a lander. So we went for a lander <laughs> and then we have to decide where to land. So we get them three options, the Gale Crater, Edition Planitia, the, the site of uh, InSight and the G0 Crater. And they decided, I don't remember. I forgot what did they decide. I guess the Gale, Gale Crater. Yes, yes, the Gale. Uh, so we finished the show going to the Gale Crater. And uh, so today we had uh, my colleague, we started, we work in, in three people. Today, my colleague made his first show of the year uh, about life. So they, they decided to study more about meteors and then uh, to, he chose uh, what object they would like to throw on Earth to, to see what happened. Um, and uh, we have to go to another place on the, the universe. And they decided to go to the solar system in, in some other, some other, somewhere else in the solar system instead of going to an exoplanet. Um, but it was uh, really tight. It was. Uh, uh, about one third okay. each option. Um, and that's what we are doing now. They decided uh, we never know where the, the show is going to end. That's it, uh, what I would like to tell you tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Guillermo. Yay, so lots of silent applause. Questions for Guillermo? Hi, this is John. Um, you say drawing constellations doesn't work. What does that mean? And what is your measure of working or not working? Uh, 
we can't uh, we cannot control who is drawing we let them all draw or nobody draw and what happens is that everybody is drawing together at the same time so uh, we have a screen full of going and <laughs> everything uh, sometimes we it, we think they found a constellation. They they really draw a constellation, but it's hard to, to say. <laughs> Other questions? I guess I have one. I don't see anybody else's hand up. Let me know if I'm interrupting you, but I'm scanning and I don't see anything. Okay. Uh, well, uh, just one thing before Carrie, uh, mm. I saw Benny ask it to, to let we draw now, but uh, Zoom has to, to choose some, some configuration before the meeting. I don't know if we can uh, able this, uh, if we able this before, we can turn it off or on during mm. the show, but we have to, to make it able before the show on the configurations. Got it. Right. Yeah, I, I didn't know you could do that in Zoom. Um, so my question is, um, even after your dome reopens fully, are you planning to keep doing virtual programs? Yes. Huh. Yes, but I don't know if we are uh, going to be able to do that because uh, we are three people in the planetarium. Yeah. And usually we have uh, shows every day in the planetarium for the schools. Mm. But uh, we had uh, some teachers that said that they are really far from a planetarium. Mm. Uh, imagine that Brazil is it's almost the same size of US, but we don't have a tenth of planetarium. Uh, of the US. We have about 100 planetariums in Brazil. Wow. And, and so we have a lot of cities that are far uh, on distance or time to, to go to a planetarium. And one teacher told us that we have traveled about six hours to go to the planetarium. Wow. And we do it with the, the kids about uh, 15 years old, but we are not brave enough to do that with 10 or seven years old kids. It's so a long trip. We yeah. really want to, to keep the virtual shows, but we are not sure if, sure if we are going to be able, because we also have a mobile planetarium. Wow. So it's a fix, the mobile and the virtual for three people. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> Other questions? See, Alan's reminding people to sign in via the chat if you haven't done that yet. Thank you, Alan. I'm not seeing any raised hands. So I think we're ready to move on. Thank you, Jeremy. And again, there will be Thank time you. at the end for general questions, but hey, I'm holding too many things to clap. Uh, so now I get to kick it over for something completely different to my coworker, Kyle Doan. All right, and uh, can you can you uh, spotlight me he, here, Carrie? You have the ability, or maybe I can do. That I will here. do my best. I should be able to. Okay. Anyway, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Kyle, and I wanted. This isn't so much of a show, but I want to show you some ways to think about adding some maybe some theatrical uh, components to your show. Um, some constraints that we might have when we're doing these virtual shows. I'm here in my office and my wall is right behind me right here. So I'll, I'll talk about uh, making a green screen that I did here. Um, but I wanted to be able to, to, to get up and move around. So I've actually added another camera that's aimed to the other side of my office up against the other wall. And I'm going to switch, uh, switch views here to that camera. And uh, We'll just fly away from the earth as one does. So we'll uh, wave to Brazil over there. So this gives you an op option if you have a camera and a little bit of distance to be able to stand up and do some more interaction with your uh, with the scene that you're talking about. Now we could put a 
constellation lines, point out constellations, or lots of different things. Um, another thing that I did here is I've actually added a green screen here that has two overlapping um, sheets. So you can disappear if you need to. Kind of pop in and out of, out of the universe. Um, think about ways that you can set up other scenes around or places that you can put props. So some people, if you have a smaller space than what I'm uh, fortunate enough to have here in my office, um, you can get a sheet of green paper. This isn't quite the right color here, but you can set up kind of like a theater where you have um, curtains almost set up. You can also make use of the space in front of you. So I've got a uh, table right here where I have some props. Oh, oh just dropped something here. Sorry, I, I mean, if my head wasn't attached, I'd probably lose that too. Hey, Kyle. Yeah. Just to, so, sorry to interrupt, but your, your volume is a bit low. I'm seeing some comments on that in the chat. Is that a little better? Okay. Oh, now there's a hum. <laughs> Not sure which is worse. Um, um, we, could still, we could still hear you, but it was just fainter. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. So, <laughs> I like no. Are, are you are you able to hear me now? That's okay. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. All right. Sorry, I, I just kind of lost my head there for a little bit. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've lost something here. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I. Can. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. All right, I'm gonna switch uh, scenes back here. Let me turn down my microphone so it's not blaring you out as much. Um, you can use all sorts of green things. You're gonna find yourself making a collection of green items. In, if you're using OBS, and the chroma key feature, then anything that's green, you can basically uh, edit out. So I'm gonna switch here to a different view <clears throat> so that you can see my studio here. And uh, uh, here's an example of something green that I collected. This is from my childhood. This was my lunchbox. I went and visited my parents recently. And those of you who know me know how much <clears throat> I love to travel. I actually think that this lunchbox <laughs> may have been an influence in that because of the maps. It's pretty cool. Shows you a lot of uh, places around the world that you might want to travel to. Uh, for instance, let's see right here. here. Here's an example. I don't know if you can see that very well, but uh, this is a pretty cool lunchbox that will take you almost anywhere in the world that you want to go. For instance, here is the uh, US Capitol. There we go. That's pretty cool. <coughs> pretty neat to have a magic lunchbox like that. Um, when I was a kid and my parents would um, try to keep me active on road trips, they would uh, have me draw. So does anyone have a favorite planet. We'll see if your favorite planet was mine. You can actually just unmute and say a planet. That's fine. Saturn. Saturn. Oh, nobody likes Saturn. Okay. Lisa well, 581D. What's that? Lisa 581D. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We <laughs> that that actually was my favorite planet as as a kid. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, in my lunchbox, let's see if I can open up here and show you. Yeah, my uh, my drawing here that I did as a kid. I, I, I apologize, it's pretty rough. I mean, I was, what, seven years old, something like that, when I drew this. But uh, pretty decent drawing of Saturn. The thing that I like about this is even as a young child, I had the concept 
that Saturn would look different on the other side, the side away from the sun. So I was able to work that into my drawing. That's, that's pretty fun. So anyway, it, you might be curious on how I did this. Um, it, not everyone's going to be able to do it. What you have to do is set your office up in front of a space-time portal, a tear in the fabric of the universe. And that's, that's a great way. As long as you can find a crack in the universe, to be able to set up your planetarium, your virtual show, um, you're, you'd be able to do these things in your own office. So anyway, I hope this gives you some ideas of ways that you can incorporate some theatrical elements into the shows that you're doing. And I'll, uh, I'll take questions, although I, I doubt anyone has any. Yay. All right, thanks, Kyle. That was fun. Who has a question? Anybody? Questions at all? I'll ask. So what is the other non-green screen color you are using? Mm. Yeah, so on OBS, if you go to your chroma key filter, so if you add a camera, what I'm gonna do here I'm just going to click on my camera and go to properties. Um, <clears throat> so there is a, sorry, I meant to go to filter, filters. So under chroma key filters, there are some that are built in. What I normally do, so these, these, uh, these green sheets here aren't, exactly green so I actually have a custom color that I picked in order to um, make those disappear um, there's also a blue color filter yeah. we've had a request to show your screen so I think so they can see where your OBS settings are is that is it possible for you to do that uh, I'm, I'm not quite set up let me okay let me try to do that While he's doing that, I was just going to interrupt and yeah. say that uh, if you go to Party City and get a green plastic tablecloths, mm. four for five bucks, large, foldable, movable, inexpensive. So, Water resistant, yes, just in case. Yeah. Just in case. <laughs> and we get great results. Nice. Yeah, these were. Uh, the sheets here were just, uh, I bought a pack of, uh, of paper. Um, the green screen that I used over on the other side, uh, I think I spent like uh, 20 bucks on Amazon for just muslin sheets that hang down. Um, I, I keep trying to click on share screen and it's probably popping up. I'm, Kyle, yeah. if you can't do that, okay. at least uh, describe, just describe exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Which you were, you were doing, but uh, do it a little more in detail. Okay. So if you right click on the camera, so it, you know, it's listed under, under your sources. I've got a camera that I call wide one. That's, that's this camera here. If you right click on it, uh, it'll pop up um, a dialog box. And one of the choices is filters. So if you click on the filter choice, you can add a chroma key filter. So if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a plus sign. You can add chroma key. And built in to the system already are uh, blue chroma key, which is what I'm using in order to do this. Um, you can set up a custom color chroma key, which is what I'm doing to do this if I wanted my green wall to disappear. Um, if you happen to be colored like me, very pink, <laughs> you can choose the built-in magenta chroma key. And then you can choose, um, you can kind of make yourself disappear, which is pretty fun. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of fun ways that you can use this. 
And I would encourage you, I mean, all of us are coming from the idea of doing our work inside of the planetarium. And doing virtual shows is a completely different thing. It can be a different experience than what we're doing in the planetarium itself. So don't constrain yourself to replicating your planetarium show online. Try to find ways of using the new tools online and uh, maybe finding new ways of doing it. I, other questions or, or comments? I have a question. Um, we've just been using the share screen on Zoom and we haven't done like anything theatrical at all. Uh, part of the reason is because um, with my computer that I'm using at home, like it can't OBS freezes every time. Um, but the other thing is, I don't actually know how to set up a virtual camera to like do that. Does anybody have like the link to a resource or like, is it really easy? You could just say how to do it like really quickly. Um, you just update, <laughs> update no your idea. Zoom, uh, update your OBS. Virtual cam is now included in it in the newest version. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's good to know though. Um, I still think that the, this system will crash if I try. So maybe once we get our upgrade soon, <laughs> I'll be able to do it. But uh, the computer I'm doing it on is like seven years old and does not like OBS. Uh, I've actually found OBS not to be too much of a resource hog. Um, I'm actually operating this on a pretty old computer and I'm running Ubuntu. So even on that, so that's a Linux flavor. Um, yeah, I um, is the first computer I've ever really had trouble getting OBS to work on, um, mm -hmm. but <laughs> dealing with it for now. Um, since we're not doing anything theatrical at the moment, it hasn't been too too difficult. But if we need to expand, it's been one of those things where I'm like, I'm not sure how. <laughs> okay, thanks though. Okay, if there aren't any more questions for Kyle, we can open it up to general questions. So if you've thought of something for Katie or Guillerme in the meantime, or if you wanna share what you're doing, it doesn't have to be a question. It's so quiet today. Has anybody um, tried using NDI? Uh, to so that they can use two computers running through OBS at the same time? Yes, I have done that. Mm. And does that make, uh, like, um, I know there's a lot of lag when you're using uh, um, Stellarium, especially mm. trying to put it through. Does that help? Uh, there, there is some lag. We, uh, we use it on... Uh, on a uh, uh, gigabit network, do not use Wi-Fi. It's not stable enough. Uh, and the, the lag is about, it's less than half a second, usually. This is in HD resolution, not full HD. Thanks. Maybe uh, uh, if I can comment, uh, just a question why you use uh, another computer to run Stellarium instead of running it directly on the same computer as OBS? Uh, so, uh, sometimes we have a different presenter or we have more than one presenter on a show. So it gives the presenter the ability to control its own computer. Mm -hmm. And it gives, it's easier to see what the heck you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> because running, because uh, what I was doing before was trying to run uh, Zoom, excuse me, yeah, um, uh, Stellarium on one half of my screen. And I've got, I mean, it's not a gigantic screen, but it's a 23 inch. And then uh, OBS on the other half. And everything on the Zoom now is only, you know, half the size it normally is. And it's hard to hit the stars and do a lot of things. Yeah, and if you use a second screen um, just for Stellarium, could be uh, because I know Stellarium have a spout output capability, 
and OBS can get a spout input. So you can feed directly from uh, most instantaneous from Stellarium to OBS. So you get no, no delay at, at all. Yeah, but you have to have a second screen. And I have a second computer, but I don't have a second screen. All right, I've seen Amy's hand up for a bit. Question, Amy. Yeah, for Guillerme, when you use Kahoot, do you have the students have their own phone? How does that work? They can, they can do that on their phone or computer. So they, can they can do Kahoot on the same computer that they are watching you on? Yes, that's, uh, that's boring because they, they have to change from one screen to another. But, uh, but that's a, a way. Or they okay. can have it in their phone. Thank you. Other questions? Feel free to just unmute yourselves. I think we're all polite enough. This is just open discussion uh, mm -hmm. session now. Uh, and we don't have to, the topic does not have to remain on OBS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it could be virtual shows in general. Uh, I have a question. Um, this is for Patrick, who mentioned about Stellarium. And did you say output through Spout? Yes, um, Stellarium have uh, the capability to be um, Spout to be a Spout sender. Spout is a plugin uh, made for Windows. It's uh, the same as Siphon in in, uh, in Mac OS. It's uh, for short. Is the able able <laughs> Sorry, the capability to share a uh, texture uh, directly into the video card from one application to another. So it's the best way to share uh, videos uh, without any latency in, in any uh, overhead from the view card. You just share the same space in the memory. So you can, uh, a receiver, a spot receiver can access to the image created by the first application directly to use it. Um, so we use mostly this uh, technology with, uh, with all the software we made to, to get a very high speed, very high re resolution, with very low uh, GPU uh, resources. So, and I know Stellarium is one of the only um, star system that have uh, spout output capability. So I know it's, it's work. And OBS don't support spout input. Uh, maybe the new version, but for the old version, you can download a plugin to install in OBS. So you have a Spout input. So all software that use um, this Spout uh, sender can be used directly with uh, OBS. Oh, thanks, Mike. Okay, okay, so I have a Mac. You said Siphon would be a plugin to use with OBS that would then take the spout signal from Stellarium? Well, spout is just for, for Windows. It's a kind of the, the, the same as uh, Siphon for OS. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about OBS for Mac, for Macintosh. I, but... see. I see. OK. Um, okay, I'll look into that. I didn't know there was things like that, but that sounds interesting. Thank you. Welcome. Other questions, comments, discussion topics? Um, I'm still charmed by the idea of having students draw constellations. And I'm wondering how badly it works. Um, could any of the hosts share a screen? It could be a star field or anything else. And maybe we can find our annotate features and, and try drawing on it. See if for it what works. It sounded like from what Guillerme said that that would have to be um, set up before we opened the meeting. 
I'm not sure that's true in a regular oh, okay. Zoom meeting. Can oh. you share a screen and we can test? Kyle just walked away, but I'm sure he'd be able to do that. Anyone with- Oh, you're muted, Kyle. Maybe just uh, fly us a bit away from Saturn so we get more of a star field. Yeah. And then uh, I'll pin you. Is that a shared screen? No, the issue is I'm, I'm running this on, uh, I've, I've been having problems sharing uh, my screen using uh, my Ubuntu setup on Zoom. Oh. I usually don't do the sharing because I use the OBS only. Okay. Um, so what I had in mind works only with Zoom screen sharing. Yeah, I, I hear you. And I'm, I, <laughs> I'm frustrated because I'm clicking on share screen and I'm getting no option to share anything. It pops up and disappears, but that is a, let me, uh, okay, actually here, I got it. Um, I figured out the best one to share, probably this one here. How do I get out of here? <laughs> okay. John, I would be really surprised if annotation works because I changed, uh, you know, after our last Zoom bomb event, uh, I changed the settings pretty drastically. And I may, have, huh. I may have eliminated the possibility of annotating, but we can test it out. I found a picture that they are not drawing their constellation. Uh, we just asked them to write their names. Mm. I can show you that picture. Well, I can confirm that I can't find my annotation tool, so Alan's probably right. Okay. Maybe that can I'll, be for a future. Sure. Yeah, sorry about that, but uh, those are the uh, those are the hazards of uh, modern day zooming. <laughs> can, can I share my screen? I, I will show you the picture where they they wrote their names. You're a co-host, so you should be able to share. Where are the annotation tools normally? You have to go to the configuration in Zoom and you will enable that so the tool will appear during this Zoom session. If you don't enable that before, it will not appear. Hmm. On mine, I go to That's the top it. of the screen where it says you are viewing and you click that and you get the annotate choice, but as I said, I'm not getting it in this meeting. That's my fault. <laughs> but the plus side is no Zoom bombers. <laughs> Other comments, questions? Looking for hands. I'm not seeing them. April. Oh, you're muted. I was just waving. Sorry. Oh, okay. Hi, April. <laughs> I, I have one question. The same that you made to me. Everybody that is making virtual shows is having virtual shows. Are you planning to keep it? To everybody, the, the question. And in the new Zoom version, you can just say yes or no, clicking the button. Yeah, I think it's going to be a long time before schools feel comfortable putting students on buses and bringing them to a theater. So for next school year, I'm anticipating Schools will still be virtual, but I'm hoping we can open to the public in September. 
Mm. I'm hoping that schools will let people bring pl more portable planetariums in starting in the fall, especially once I've got my little card filled out here. Mm. <laughs> They're telling me that when we reopen, the planetarium is not in the first phase of reopening. So I will be stuck at home for a while longer. So yeah, I'm going to have to go virtual. Here's a question for the whole group that's related to that. Um, let's even once we're back open fully and we're able to be in our domes with no restrictions, what are some of the ways that you're going to use virtual tools even at that point? I may try to use it in marketing a little bit because then you can have a, a virtual planetarium meeting to talk about what the program is like with the school. Mm -hmm. You know, before, before the pandemic, there was, um, there was dome casting. Okay. Where people would, uh, um, not sure why I'm, am I showing up? Uh, okay. There was dome casting that uh, allowed a planetarium to, to bring in um, you know, visitors, guests, guest speakers and things like that. So uh, I don't know how they did that, but I, and I, you know, I never found out, but it seems like the, these tools that we're seeing here could conceivably be used to bring in a guest speaker uh, you know, for a flat screen, you know, for a, an inset flat screen on the dome. Could require a separate projector. One of the, one of the things when I was working in the, um, at various museums, one of the challenges I had with schools coming in, I would send a, um, a, a pre-packet that the teacher is supposed to work with the students to get them ready for what we're going to cover in the planetarium and probably you know 10 percent of the classes did that but i think maybe with these uh with these virtual tools maybe i can show up in the classroom and do a little bit of work with the kids prior to that that class coming in and give them a little bit of a little bit of prep Yeah, I think if it's done wisely, the virtual program can be an, an excellent marketing tool for uh, fixed planetarium ideas. It kind of reminds me of the old um, bit of museum have both a portable and a fixed dome or will they compete with each other? And I think that if it's done right, they don't compete, they complement because you can use the portable to expand your reach and get people a taste, you know, come to the bigger planetarium and see some different things maybe that our portable system doesn't have the capability to do. Although that line is getting blurred. There's actually very little that a digital portable system can't do, but it can also be done in a fixed dome. I've got a couple of questions, uh, you guys. The first question is, I'm having real trouble acquiring flat screen versions of planetarium content. And I'm wondering if there's a source out there that we can purchase the flat screen version of, say, um, uh, I can't think of a good example, but you, you get the idea. We're looking for flat screen versions of shows because of this this platform. And you know, the second thing is, I'm having trouble because we're a small planetarium out in the middle of the woods somewhere, having trouble getting into um, marketing of programs. Like I want to do a virtual program, and I'd love to have people from all over the world attend, but I have no way to get that message out to everybody, you know what I mean? Um, and I'm wondering if there, anybody has any suggestions for that. Well, I saw that Mike Murray had a tremendous response from an Aurora program recently, but I haven't seen his name pop up here. Am I missing Mike? No? Um, he had some something crazy, like tens of thousands of people 
watching his program, but I, I'm not sure how he got the word out. He, he said he did not know how that something in the algorithm spread the word. And uh, okay. so it at one point said there was something like a million people were interested in viewing his program. And I think he still ended up with several thousand on the live version. And then of course people could go back and watch the recording. But that was a fluke in terms of the uh, algorithm as far as he could tell. Hmm. We've been posting uh, videos through Facebook on a regular basis. And sometimes we think it's the topic that gets people. Mm. Um, you know, I've got something that's had several thousand views and then I've got some things that have had 20 views. And so it's sometimes kind of hit or miss what else is going on in the world when it gets posted and things like that. So, mm -hmm. but no, Mike, Mike was uh, dumbfounded when they started looking at the, uh, <laughs> at the numbers. I haven't heard any sort of follow-up on did he get more subscribers to his YouTube channel? How is how have subsequent programs done? Um, you know, things like that. And it was, it was a pretty good talk. Uh, he covered a lot of territory. Uh, it was a nice full hour and had a lot of really good questions. Good, that's so. great. Um, another one that comes to mind that, that might be helpful that I haven't seen here is Derek Demeter because he seems to do a great job getting the word out for Seminole State College's programs. Yeah, Derek and I have partnered on a couple of programs. That, that yeah. yeah, yeah. If you do Facebook Lives, they, their, their uh, algorithm will, they, they, they just, they suck up. I mean, they want Facebook Lives. So they'll send it out to everybody, even if they have nothing to do with you. Mm. So uh, you can get it out that way and uh, you just have to do it you know, like every day, <laughs> because <laughs> once the Facebook Live is done, bye bye, it's gone. Uh, or it, it's not gone, but it's harder to heck find. Hmm. YouTube Lives as well. I can. Uh, one thing we, we did in our state, uh, we had people from different cities in our state, and we put the, the teachers in the Zoom room and the kids to watch from YouTube. So we had about 50 teachers in the, in the Zoom and each teacher with their classroom or their school watching through YouTube. Uh, it made our uh, YouTube channel grow, I don't know, about 500%. Uh, <laughs> from almost nothing to more than 1,000 thousand people uh, that we had. We, we didn't work in YouTube before the pandemic. So we had just about 200 people in our YouTube channel. And we did that. And now we have much more than 1,000. Uh, so if you engage the teachers, they will spread the word for you. That's great. I think I might mention that uh, in an upcoming um, in an upcoming Zoom seminar, Toshi Komatsu and uh, Mike Askins are going to do something about stargazing sessions that they've been doing virtually. Mm -hmm. And uh, the la I attended one of them, the last one, which was uh, you know in March. They do it, they seem to do it every month for now, and there were I don't know there were well over 150 people there. So um, I think uh, maybe we can ask them. Th that session is going to be, I think it's the May seminar, toward the okay. last Friday in May. Um, so yeah, we can ask Toshi how they do, how they publicize theirs and how they run it. Uh, that, that, um, that session um, actually in, in, in May is, is um, uh, supposed to be on our field trips. Um, not on our stargazing, um, so it'll be um, uh, it'll, it'll it'll be on our field trips. But on the the stargazing that that you attended, um, Alan, that one um, kind of like Mike Murray, we're a bit uh, flummoxed on that one because we're not sure what happened there. Um, because normally our views were much lower, um, 
but for that one, for some reason, we got a lot more uh, views and we've had um, a lot of follow-up views. I think at our peak, we had 173 viewing live. Um, and then since it's been um, posted on, on YouTube sort of after the fact, we've had um, about 800 views, a little bit more than 800 views. Uh, we're not actually sure why there was a sudden increase because previously, the, like I said, the numbers were pretty small, but um, it's a mystery, the mystery of the internet. Algorithms. One thing you can do is well, at the beginning of your show, ask everybody that is there watching you, ask them all to share it to their Facebook page. Uh, and then it'll be going out. So anybody that's reading their page will see it and they may join in and, and that doesn't cost anything. Good suggestion. Um, to go back to Ken's question about flat screen content, I know that uh, the Big Astronomy Full Dome Show, which is uh, free, funded by the NSF, that production, they specifically did a flat screen version. So um, I think I think it's just bigastronomy.org is the website. And it's a, it's a fantastic show if you haven't seen it yet. It's really, really good. Um, and I also saw that Loch Ness Productions has started, instead of doing their... Um, Full Dome Rentals has come out with something for people to watch planetarium shows at home, which I haven't done anything like that yet, but I suspect that might have a flat screen option too. Something to look into. Yeah, it does, Gary. Good. Okay, thanks, it's, Mike. Yeah, flat, flat screen rentals are shows aimed at like families and individuals, mm -hmm. not, not uh, dome rentals. Yeah, I was guessing if it was at home, people wouldn't know how to convert the dome master view to anything meaningful. All right, well, it's, um, oh, oh, did I cut somebody off? I, I was just gonna say, Bayes Mountain has a number of shows that are specifically uh, um, produced for flat screen of our planetarium shows as cool. well. Do you wanna put your contact info in the chat there, Adam? So you know how to, I think we could find you anyway, but might as well make it as easy as possible. Uh, we've gone a little bit past the hour. Does anybody have last questions or? Comments? If you haven't yet put your info in the chat, please sign in there. It's our sign in sheet. I have a logistical question uh, about the seminars. You know, with all the extra security measures put in, uh, maybe we can have a show of hands or indicate if you had a lot of trouble connecting this time. Did anybody have a lot of trouble? So the password password was okay. I couldn't find the password for a very long time. I, it, I tried starting about 20 minutes early and I think I finally found it about three minutes after. <laughs> hmm. But it's the old situation where the people who did have trouble you want to hear from aren't here yeah well everybody who is not here please raise your hand yeah. i get dome l once a day so i didn't see the password it didn't come into my email until 4 30 so a half an hour before the start of the program today so it's yeah, just enough time but i didn't see it like yesterday well that's good information because i put i put it out to dome l the yesterday maybe i need to do it two days before That message approval is sometimes slow from my inbox. You could also put it in like Dome Dialogues and places like that. It is actually Andy Creech does put it into Dome Dialogues. Um, also, if anybody wants to be on the PPA email list, that, you know, that I always send it out via that. So mm -hmm. just contact me. Um, I guess I can put my uh, email address in the uh, chat. Maybe I can figure out how to, no, okay. I'll put that in, <clears throat> but you can contact me to get on a PPA email list. There, do, there are not a lot of messages that go out on that Google group. Um, so, so you, you know, like maybe <laughs> one a week is a lot. It's probably more like one a month most of the time.
All right, I think it feels like we've come to a natural end. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody for attending and give a special thank you to our presenters. Um, that was a, a lot of fun. And I, I definitely learned some new things. And I want to, I want to say bomber. to Carrie, I want to say to <laughs> Carrie, Carrie, you organized this and this has been one of the best, one of the very best uh, uh, Zoom seminars that we've had. Uh, well, thank you. I guess you say, I bet you say that to all the seminars. But no, we, <laughs> all I did was organize. It was really the presenters that made it the best. <laughs> and I'm going to turn off the recording. <laughs>